Hi friends, I'm Dr. Jennifer Jacqueline, your Doom teacher. So today's topic of discussion is about witness. So this witness topic is very, very important topic when it comes to MBBS examinations in short answers. And it's a very important topic when it comes to your entrance examinations as well. Okay, so most of us will have a doubt whether witness is a person or a thing. I had this doubt. So I'll make it clear today that witness means is a person. A person represents a witness. Right. So what does this person do? This person will give a statement about a fact or a truth what he observes. Right. So this is witness. So there are three types of witness. Right. So first one is common witness. Second is expert witness. Third is hostile witness. So these three important types you should remember. So the first one common witness by the name suggests any person, any common man or a layman can be a common witness. For example, most of the ladies go to the shop to buy vegetables. So like likewise, I am going to buy vegetables. During that time, I witness a incident happening in front of me. Two people are fighting, say A and B. This B person, he gets very, uh, in a fit of anger, he just takes out some uh, knife or whatever he's having in his hand and he tries to harm this person. So I am witnessing that incident. So I am a common witness. So I am being a eyewitness. So an example of a common witness is a eyewitness. So we know this now. Suppose you've been called to the court, right? So you've been called to the court as a common witness. What do you do? You just have to tell what you have observed. You just have to tell the fact. So you cannot give an opinion when you are acting as a common witness. Right. For example, I said I'm buying vegetables and I saw the incident. And when they're asking you a question in the court, you cannot say, I think I've observed. I'm not sure about it. It might be that they just had a friendly fight and all those stories you cannot build up there. You just have to tell the fact. No opinions when you are a common witness. Right. There is a very important MCQ in this, which is called as first hand knowledge rule. They'll ask you in an MCQ. Which witness is applicable as a first hand knowledge rule or first hand knowledge rule is applicable to which witness? So the answer is common witness and I'll tell you why. What is first hand knowledge rule? First hand knowledge rule means it is an information which a person gets directly. You're not getting information from any other person. So whoever sees the incident or whoever witnesses it by himself is called as first hand knowledge rule. So that is applicable only to common witness, right? So since it's forensic medicine, there should be some section related to witness, right? So 118 Indian Evidence Act gives common witness. So this is all about common witness. So we know common witness will be given by a common person. He can only give facts. First hand knowledge rule is being applicable to this and 118 Indian Evidence Act gives common witness, right? So moving on to the next one, which is expert witness by the name suggests an expert is an expert witness. These are all, you know, student tricks to say an expert will be an expert witness. So to elaborate more on that, I would say it is defined as a person who is skilled, trained, knowledgeable and experienced in a particular field can act as a expert witness, right? For example, suppose I have done a specialization in forensic medicine. So I can act as a forensic expert. So we can take a better example. So ballistic expert. So who is related to firearm, who has done so much of experience and skills in firearm. So he can be a ballistic expert. Suppose in a crime scene, there is too much of fingerprints there. So a fingerprint analyst or a fingerprint expert will go and analyze it. So a fingerprint expert acts as a expert witness. So in this, what is important is he will be the expert witness can give an opinion on it. Whereas your common witness cannot give an opinion. He just have to tell what is what. But the expert witness can give opinion. That is a basic difference between both of them. We'll take autopsy as an example. So an autopsy doctor, what does he do? He do a postmortem, right? So when he opens a body, he will note down what all he is observing. Those are facts, right? Those are facts that he is observing. So that is one part. The next part, what does he do? The conclusion he gives, that is an opinion about why the person has died. The opinion about cause of death. So there are two. One, he observes the facts. 
one he gives an opinion so there are two in our hand so what does it imply a doctor can be a common witness as well as a expert witness so this is also a very very important mcq so what section gives expert witness 45 indian evidence act gives about or tells about expert witness right so the third one is hostile witness so hostile witness means a person who gives a willful false statement so any statement which he says will contradict his own statement that is hostile witness so there is a very very important short answer more frequently our short answer differentiate between perjury and hostile witness right so the basic difference is hostile witness is a part of perjury that is a one liner you have to remember so now i will tell you the difference this hostile witness means it's a false statement whereas your perjury means giving a false evidence under oath so this is the two terms which you have to remember so now you know both are wrong so if it is a wrong you will be punished so both are punishable so next you have to remember few sections which is related to this so 191 ipc tells about perjury p e r j u r y right this is very very important so i have told hostile witness and perjury are punishable so under which section it's punishable 193 ipc and the punishment is for 7 years imprisonment right so 191 we saw 193 we saw what is in between 192 we don't know what it is now we will know so 192 means it's about fabricating false evidence fabricating false evidence that means suppose there is no truth on your part but you are trying to fabricate an evidence and create a false evidence to prove something which is not truth so that is fabricating false evidence that is being given under section 192 ipc so there is another section which is related to it which is 197 ipc right that is issuing a false certificate so the sections which you have to remember when it comes to perjury and hostile witness are 191 ipc perjury 192 ipc fabricating false evidence 193 ipc punishment for perjury and hostile witness 197 ipc which is issuing of false certificate right so whenever a question is been asked in forensic medicine it would be good if you end that question with a medico legal importance this is for mbbs examination so when it comes to mcqs there are most possible or frequently asked questions especially in your ianset exam your first hand knowledge rule is a very repeat question and next one whether a doctor can be a common witness or a expert witness so we know now that a doctor or an expert witness can be both a common and an expert witness and the sections which are related to perjury these three are very important when it comes to mcqs so yeah this is about witness so if you feel that this video is useful kindly circulate to your friends so that they can get benefited right i'll meet you all in the next video let's have a happy learning